Krishna Pistaya Bhutale Shimate Bhakti Vedanta Swami Vitinamane Namaste Saraswati Devi Gauravani Pracharine Devasesha Sunyavari Pascha Insatarine
Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama
Krishna Krishna Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare Krishna Krishna Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama. Rama Rama Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare
Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare Hare Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama Hare 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 Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Jai Radha Madhava Kunjabi Hari Jai Radha Madhava Kunjabi Hari Gopi Janaba Dava Gineva Dadani Gopi Janaba Dava Gineva Dadani
Yamuna Tira
Shemate Bhakti Vedanta Swami Niti Namani Namaste Saraswati Devi Gauravani Pacharani Nirvishesha Shanyavari Pascha Chari Satari Is there a Bhagavad Gita? Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo 
Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya I'll read a verse from Bhagavad Gita, chapter 9, the first verse. If I read the Sanskrit translation and commentary. Shri Bhagavan Uvacha. You, if you'd like to repeat, okay. I'll be very happy. Many of you may know this verse. Idam tute guya tamam. Pravaksham yana suya ve. Gyanam vigyana sahitam. Yajgyatva moksha se subhat. Actually, I'm smiling, I'm remembering this verse. It was the very first verse I gave a class on. <laughs> uh -huh. It was almost 44 years ago. It was a verse. <laughs> I'm smiling because there's a little story that goes with it. It was my very first class, and the verse, translation of the verse is, the Supreme Personality of God had said, my dear Arjuna, because you are never envious of me, I shall impart to you this most confidential knowledge and realization, knowing which you shall be relieved of the miseries of material existence. So I read the verse and I read the commentary. And then when I started to speak, the only thing I could say was, I must be pretty envious of Krishna because I can't think of anything else to say. <laughs> <laughs> And then I asked the temple president if he could take over for me. <laughs> yeah, it was this verse. <laughs> huh? It was right here. I was sitting right over there, right about no, somewhere right over there. We used to have be at that part of the temple room. Yeah, it was in 19, maybe January 74, something like that. Yeah. Yeah, maybe I'll have a little more to say tonight. Not much, probably. <laughs> <coughs> so translation. The Supreme Personality of God had said, My dear Arjuna, because you are never envious of me, I shall impart to you this most confidential knowledge and realization, knowing which you shall be relieved of the miseries of material existence. Purport. As a devotee hears more and more, about the Supreme Lord, he becomes enlightened. This hearing process is recommended in the Srimad Bhagavatam. Quote, the messages of the Supreme Personality of Godhead are full of potencies, and these potencies can be realized if topics regarding the Supreme Godhead are discussed amongst devotees. End of quote. This cannot be achieved by the association of mental speculators or academic scholars, for it is realized knowledge. Devotees are constantly engaged in the Supreme Lord's service. The Lord understands the mentality and sincerity of a particular living entity who is engaged in Krishna consciousness and gives him the intelligence to understand the science of Krishna in the association of devotees. Discussion of Krishna is very potent, and if a fortunate person has such association and tries to assimilate the knowledge, then he will surely make advancement towards spiritual realization. Lord Krishna, in order to encourage Arjuna to higher and higher elevation in his potent service, describes in this ninth chapter matters more confidential than he has already disclosed. Hmm. The word here in this verse is guyatamam. Guyatamam. Guya means confidential. Tamam means the most. The most confidential. In fact, 
it's described that in the first six chapters there is confidential knowledge about liberation and in the middle chapters of Bhagavad Gita it is described as more confidential and in this chapter beginning with chapter 9 the two middle chapters 9 and 10 is Guyatamam confidential more confidential most confidential Guyatamam so Krishna is now telling Arjuna in this verse this is the most confidential knowledge and he's explaining to Arjuna what his qualification is for getting this most confidential knowledge. Uh, the Acharyas also explain what most confidential knowledge is describing what is called as Kevala Bhakti. Kevala Bhakti is the pure unalloyed devotional service and that is what Krishna is now going to tell Arjuna, but he's telling Arjuna that the reason why I'm telling you this is because you're not envious of me. Sometimes this is a hard pill to swallow. Uh, that people, they can't imagine, well, what, why would I be envious of Krishna? But what Krishna has to say may make you envious. And sometimes people don't like to hear that Krishna is the supreme enjoyer, um, uh, everything he's Parama Parusha, the supreme joy of everything, as he describes in Bhagavad Gita, Hamsa Vasu Prabhavo Mataksavam Pravatate, Iti Matva Bhajate Mam Buddha Baba Samandvata, that everything is coming from me, the material, spiritual worlds. Uh, the wise who know this perfectly, they know that uh, they worship me with all of their hearts, engage in my devotional service and worship me with all their hearts. So those who accept, like Arjuna's qualification as Krishna is telling Arjuna right now, you're, because you're not envious that I'm the supreme enjoyer and because you are ready to hear whatever I have to tell you about my divine position, matak parataram nanyat kinchidasti dananjaya, that there's no truth superior to me, Everything rests upon me, just like pearls are resting on a thread. And because Arjuna was ready to hear, therefore Krishna says, I'll give you most confidential knowledge. And what's the value of the most confidential knowledge? One of the criteria which he's explaining in this verse is if you are able, if you're qualified for most confidential, first is to be qualified, qualified for most confidential, then this most confidential knowledge will relieve you from all the miseries of material existence. That's kind of the essence of what Krishna is telling Arjuna in this verse. So he's going to speak about Kevala Bhakti, which is the most confidential type of devotional service, which is devotional service which is pure and unalloyed and unmotivated. Savai Pungsam Paro Dhammo that the supreme occupation for all mankind is that by which one can achieve to loving service to the Lord and such service must be kevala. I must be unmotivated, ahaitukiya pratihata. Unmotivated and uninterrupted. These are two very, very, very elevated criteria, uh, which Krishna, uh, well, it's actually, it's, that's, that verse is spoken by Sutta Goswami and Srimad Bhagavatam. When the sages of Naimasharanya asked Sutta Goswami, uh, there was a glass here, what happened to it? Oh, I guess it disappeared. <coughs> when the sages of Naimasharanya uh, asked Sutta Goswami, can you please tell us what is the highest occupational duty for all mankind? And then Sutta Goswami explained, this is the most important occupational duty. There are so many different occupational duties that one must perform. But the highest occupational duty is when one is engaged in service to Krishna without motivation and without interruption. And only this type of service can fully satisfy the self. 
which of course is, is the way to become freed from material miseries, to become self-satisfied. Uh, anyways, we're just interjecting here a little bit about Kevala. We can speak a little bit more about Kevala Bhakti, but let's continue with the purport first. I'm just explaining here the word guyatamam, which Krishna is using in this verse. Guyatamam means this is most confidential. And most confidential, I think another important point that needs to be brought out is there is a qualification for obtaining most confidential knowledge. Krishna, just like any person, if he has something confidential about himself, he doesn't tell it to anybody. You know, generally, uh, you know, if you have something confidential, you, if confidential topics, you share with those who won't abuse it. <laughs> right? And you are not going to go out and start telling confidential things to somebody who may you know, take advantage. So Krishna is saying that for this, you to have this knowledge, it must come from me. And in this chapter, he also explains that how he says, out of compassion for them, I who am dwelling within their hearts, I destroy with the shining lamp of knowledge the darkness born of ignorance. He says, Teshtam sata tam yuktanam bhajatam piti purvakam tadami buddhi yogam tam yenam pupiyanti te To those who are always endeavoring to serve me, then I give them, I give them the understanding with which they can come to me. So Krishna gives the criteria, knowledge is coming from me. This knowledge of Bhagavad Gita is coming from Krishna. And even when the knowledge is presented from somebody else, even if it's presented by somebody else, it's realized knowledge, vijnana, idam tu te guya tamam, pramanaksami anasuyave, jnana vijnana sahitam. Jnana is theoretical knowledge, and vijnana is realized knowledge. It's not just theoretical knowledge, but it's realized knowledge. So even if it comes from somebody other than Krishna, because it's realized, that means that person has understood that Krishna is the source of everything. And because it's realized, it means that whatever realizations he has, has manifested in his heart by the grace of the Lord in the heart. Otherwise, what is the question of realized? Right? So Krishna very clearly explains that realized knowledge is knowledge which has been revealed. It may be revealed by a Vaishnava, but then it's confirmed in the heart by those who are not envious of Krishna and accept that this knowledge I'm hearing is as good as coming from Krishna and because it's as good as coming from Krishna and I'm not envious of Krishna and I have faith in Krishna and I accept it then one can present and Prabhupada makes that point actually I think it's at the end of this purport huh? yes it is <laughs> he makes the point at the end of the purport I'm jumping a little bit forgive me because Prabhupada makes the point that what is his qualification for speaking Bhagavad Gita and he says the Sanskrit word anasuyave in this verse is also very significant. Generally, the commentators, even if they are highly scholarly, they're all envious of Krishna, the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Even the most erudite scholars write on Bhagavad Gita very inaccurately because they are envious of Krishna. Their commentaries are useless. The commentaries given by devotees of Lord are bona fide. No one can explain Bhagavad Gita or give perfect knowledge of Krishna if he's envious. One who criticizes the character of Krishna without knowing him is a fool. So such commentary should be very carefully avoided. For one who understands that Krishna is the Supreme Personality of Godhead, the pure and transcendental personality, these chapters will be very beneficial. So, therefore, the advantage of being non-envious is that one can speak the message without interpreting. Well, interpreting is Krishna, well, Sri Bhagavan Vacha to mean somebody else, something else besides Krishna himself speaking and enlightening Arjuna. And this is, requires some 
faith. Anyways, let's continue with the purport. Um, the very beginning of Bhagavad Gita, first chapter, is more or less an introduction to the rest of the book. And in the second and third chapters, the spiritual knowledge described is called confidential. Topics discussed in the seventh and eighth chapters are specifically related to devotional service. And because they bring enlightenment in Krishna consciousness, they are called more confidential. But the matters which are described in the ninth chapter deal with unalloyed pure devotion. Therefore, this is called the most confidential. One who is situated in the most confidential knowledge of Krishna is naturally transcendental. He therefore has no material pangs, although he is in the material world. In the Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu, it is said that although one who has a sincere desire to render loving service to the Supreme Lord is situated in the conditional state of material existence, he is to be considered liberated. Similarly, we shall find in the Bhagavad Gita, 10th chapter, that anyone who is engaged in that way is a liberated person. Uh, Krishna is saying, I, if you hear this most confidential knowledge, because you're not envious of me, you will relieved, be relieved from all material miseries. And actually, that's what liberation means. It's, but liberation for a devotee is, uh, is simply the, a byproduct. Mm -hmm. uh, a byproduct of bhakti. It is not the ultimate goal. Uh, and Prabhupada quotes or gives reference to a verse from Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu by Rupa Goswami. Iha yasya hariya dasye kamana manasagira nikala vapyavasta su jivan mukta su uchate. That if a person is engaged in service to Krishna, ahetukiya pratihata, without motivation and without interruption, with his body, mind, and words, then he's already liberated, even though he's even within, within the physical body. Most oftentimes people have this conception of liberation means it's that, that state of nirvana, or that, that, that state beyond this physical world, which is achieved when I leave this body, when I give up this body. But Rupa Goswami states very clearly, and it's supported in this verse, that one can become liberated from material miseries. In fact, excuse me, I'm quoting a lot of verses tonight, but they are coming to my mind. In the Srimad Bhagavatam, Lord Krishna, or Lord Kapila Dev, speaks to his mother, Devahuti, as he was also describing Kivala Bhakti to her. And he said, Marashaya Kata Mishta Shrinvanti Kati Anticha Tapanti Vividas Taipa Naitaman Gachitetasa. Says that engaged constantly in hearing and chanting about me, sadhus don't suffer from material miseries because they're always filled with thoughts of my activities and pastimes. Some may say, well, that's pretty, Hare Krishna Bhushara. Oh, my god brother just came. And, uh, you should receive him. Welcome. Please give him a seat. <coughs> he joined around the same time I did. In North Beacon Street in our old temple. I don't know what the building is now. Became a halfway house after we moved out. Huh? 40 North Beacon, 40 North Beacon Street, yes. It's still there. Hasn't been demolished yet, huh? Yeah. Anyways, he joined her around the same time. He started coming. I moved in just a few months. They let me join. Yeah. <laughs> if you would have seen him, you would have understood that statement. <laughs> Just see, 45 years later, <laughs> and still going strong. Such is the power of pure devotional service. 
So, uh, no, I was quoting the verse from Lord Kapila. Uh, he spoke to Devahuti. That engage constantly in hearing and chanting about me. Sadhus don't suffer from material miseries because they're always filled with thoughts of my activities and pastimes in this world. This is another point that Krishna is making to Arjuna, that you'll be able to become relieved from all the miseries of material existence. Sometimes we think that the best way to become from all, relieved from all the miseries of material existence is, well, there's various ways people think how to become relieved from the miseries of material existence. There's sense gratification, which is one. There's intoxication, which is another. Uh, there is, uh, sometimes people think liberation, which is that this liberation means that to nullify one's eternal identity, to become one with, and to enter into the void. And if, if I don't exist, then I won't suffer, and that sounds pretty good to me. And uh, there are different ideas, both from the perspective of karma, or sense enjoyment, and jnana, mental speculation, which leads to liberation. These are different various ways to become freed from material miseries. But Krishna is telling Arjuna, and Kalatka Dev is telling his mother, that sadhus don't suffer from material miseries because they're so absorbed in thoughts of Krishna that these, the miseries of this world are not affecting them. They may feel pain, they may become diseased, they may grow old, they may die, but because their consciousness being fully absorbed in thoughts of Krishna, then one of the verses that Rupa Goswami also explains to, to, uh, or tells to explain this phenomena, he says that Savo Paravinir Moktam Tat Paratvena Nirmalam Hrishikena Hrishikesha Sevanam Bhaktir Uchate. That when one engages in devotional service with his mind, body, and senses, he serves Hrishikesha, who is the master of senses, then there is naturally two byproducts that manifest. One in is the Savo Pada Vinir Moktam. Savo Pari Upadi means designations. Sava upadis, all designations, and the most powerful designation is I am this body. <laughs> That's sa all designations, Sava upadi, venir muktam. They go away. One becomes liberated from all designations. Tatparat vena nirmalam, hishikesha, hishikena, sevanam bhakti uchite, by engaging in service. First byproduct is, is that he becomes free from designations. And what happens also? The senses become controlled. Why? Because Hrishikesha, who is the master of the senses, gives a superior pleasure. We often quote the verse also that uh, uh, spoken by Prabodhananda Saraswati, where he says that for one who gets the merciful glance of Lord Chaitanya, then the venomous serpents of the senses become like serpents with broken fangs. They no longer have any poisonous effect. When a serpent has its fang, bro its fang broken, it can't strike an object. In the same way, when the senses, when one gets the mercy of Lord Chaitanya, when one gets visaya vinivartante nirahara dehina rasa vajam rasopyasva param jistvarnivartate that the embodied soul may restrict his senses from sense objects, even though there's still some taste, but ceasing such engagements by experiencing a higher taste, he becomes fixed in consciousness. So, Hrishikesha, Hrishikena, Hrishikesha, who is Krishna, the master of the senses, he gives a superior pleasure. And when that superior pleasure is manifest, then the devotee doesn't even, he's, he becomes transcendental to the dualities of the material world. Now, of course, sometimes there may be glimpses of such transcendental consciousness. Sometimes this transcendental consciousness may become more steady. Uh, and the more steady stages, of course, this requires purification of heart. But Lord Chaitanya is so merciful that Lord Chaitanya, 
is actually we were speaking about this. Where was it? Oh, we were speaking about it in Hartford. That's right. A few nights ago. Nights ago? A week ago. <laughs> I lose track of time. Forgive me. I forget where I am. Uh, Our Lord Chaitanya, we were reading Prabhupada in a commentary, and Prabhupada said that Krishna, when Krishna appeared 5,000 years ago, he said, first you should surrender unto me, and I'll deliver you from sinful reactions. He said, but Lord Chaitanya very, is very merciful that Lord Chaitanya was Krishna appeared again, but Lord Chaitanya took that condition away. Instead of saying first surrender, he said, just take. Just take. In other words, Krishna said, you, if you surrender, I'll deliver you from sinful reactions. But Lord Chaitanya was so merciful, so kind, that he said, just take, he's giving something. As Bhakti Thakur says, he's, Lord Chaitanya has come to give the, the right medicine for the people in this age. And therefore, he's come to give the medicine, which is, this Hare Krishna mantra. So, in many places, Srila Prabhupada emphasizes the point that the safest place to be in this world so that one will not become allured by the, uh, dwell, uh, by the attractions of this world is to be absorbed in chanting Hare Krishna. In fact, in the very verse in Bhagavad Gita, in the eighth chapter, just before this verse, where Krishna says, Anta Kali Chamavima, Krishna says, whoever remembers me at the time of giving up his body, at once he attains this, my nature. Of this there's no doubt. And Prabhupada says the best way to remember Krishna, right? what is this? Smaran. Is to incessantly chant Hare Krishna. <laughs> to incessantly chant. It's the safest. It's the safest. Safest place to be in. One is always protected. Is if one is absorbed in chanting the holy name of the Lord. Why? Because Krishna is so kind that he made himself, he didn't say, okay, you can surrender to me first only when I tell you surrender to me. He made himself so easily accessible to surrender by saying, okay, I'll appear now in this age of Kali Instead of you having to come to me and instruct you and tell you to surrender to me, I'll appear to you in the form of my name, and all you have to do is take my name, and that's me. <laughs> and when you take my name, I'm there. I'm present in my name. And if you just surrender to me in the form of my name by chanting my names, Cheto Dapana Majana Bhava Mahadevagni Nirvapana, as Lord Chaitanya says, cleanses the heart of all the dust accumulated for years together. Thus the fire of conditional life of repeated birth and death is extinguished. Miseries go away. To the degree that we take up the process, the transcendental process. So a devotee who becomes absorbed in transcendental activities, he gets a glimpse of what is liberated activity. Gets a glimpse. He's not liberated. <laughs> but he gets a glimpse of what is liberated activities. I never forget the time also, I remember. <laughs> I kept all, getting all these memories from the early days. And just say, I guess it was seeing Bushara. <laughs> <laughs> I remember when, it was 1974. No, it was 1973 because it was still in West Beacon, uh, North Beacon Street. We had gone out. We had gone out. It was the first year that I went out to distribute Srila Prabhupada's books. And we, it, was the first, it was a spontaneous marathon that year. It just happened kind of spontaneously. Everybody decided, let's go out and let's really make a big effort to distribute Srila Prabhupada's books. And our party went out and we stayed out for four weeks and we stayed in some apartment in Springfield and we were going out every morning leaving in the morning at 8.30 and coming back at night like at 10 o'clock every day just I'm, I don't know, I'm looking around I think many of you will be able to understand there's not so many newcomers 
here tonight. But this is what we were doing in those days. This is how Prabhupada, Prabhupada, um, he said, okay, become liberated. <laughs> and he said, just engage 24 hours a day in Krishna's service and you'll be liberated. <laughs> so we would just go out early in the morning and, uh, and then come back at night at 10 o'clock and for like 12 straight hours, we would be out just distributing. We had, I think that year we had a book called Lord Chaitanya and Five Features which was the seventh chapter of Adi Lila, chapter seven, Lord Chaitanya and Five Features about Panchatattva. And we were distributing, those were the only books we had for distribution. So after four weeks, I came back to the temple. And I remember coming before Radha Gopi Balava. And I remember dancing in front of Radha Gopi Balava. And I was thinking, am I in the spiritual world? <laughs> <laughs> I, just, I just, this is amazing. I just didn't want. To, I didn't want to stop. This, this is it. This is, this is what it means to be liberated. Now, of course, it wasn't. Didn't stay like that. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe some devotees who've actually experienced. I'm, I'm sure Bhima can speak about this, right? He's got some some liberated times, right? <laughs> that was liberation. <laughs> but to be fully engaged in, 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 a, in a selfless activity. And in those days, I remember, you know, that it was so cold. You know, and people would always say, you know, how much are you getting paid for this? And we'd say, nothing. And they'd go, are you crazy? Because <laughs> they can't understand. Who would go out, stand outside in minus 20 degrees weather, and meeting people on the streets and parking lots, and people can't understand that, that the returns are not what goes in the bank balance, but the returns are something that Krishna can only give in the heart. And uh, therefore, to be fully absorbed in these activities uh, is, is liberated activity. And Prabhupada would, would speak that way. He would even say, some of my disciples, they are liberated. <laughs> of course, w not fully liberated. But he understood that liberated means to be fully engaged. So one who remains fully engaged, then what happens is, cheto dhapana majana, bhava mahadavagni nirvapana, the heart becomes cleansed. And when the heart becomes cleansed, and if one is careful, to avoid committing offenses against the holy name, then these two byproducts will naturally manifest. So Lord Kapila Dev told Devahuti, my devotees who's always absorbed in thoughts of me, he's liberated. He doesn't suffer from material miseries because his thoughts are always absorbed in me. And then the next verse he says, Ta'ite sarava sarvi sarva sangha vivajata sangha shteshvata te pratya sangha dosha harahite. He said, Oh, my mother, oh, virtuous lady, you should seek out the association of such devotees and become attached to hearing from them. Because if you become attached to hearing from them about me, it will counteract all the pernicious effects of your material attachments. Liberated activity. Not only is it liberated activity to be fully engaged with the body, mind, and senses, but as liberated activities to be in the association of those who are always speaking about Krishna. And that's what this verse is about. That's what this verse is all about. Krishna is, is, is saying that, that, my dear Arjuna, because you're never envious of me, I shall impart you this most confidential knowledge and realization, knowing which you should be relieved of the miseries of material existence. And Prabhupada says right here, in the commentary, the devotees are constantly engaged in the Supreme Lord's service. The Lord understands the mentality and sincerity of a particular living entity who is engaged in Krishna consciousness and gives him the intelligence to understand the science of Krishna consciousness in the association of devotees. Discussion of Krishna is very potent. And if a fortunate person has such association and tries to assimilate the knowledge, then he will surely make advancement towards spiritual realization. 
Lord Krishna, in order to encourage Arjuna to higher and higher elevation in his potent service, describes in this ninth chapter matters more confidential than any he has already disclosed. So it's more potent. It becomes more potent in the association of devotees. Of course, Arjuna was hearing directly from Krishna. And Krishna is saying, because you're accepting me, not envious, I have a lot to tell you. I'll keep on going. And Arjuna was, of course, so enthralled by what he was hearing, Arjuna didn't think, I've had enough, Krishna, okay? <laughs> I'm tired now. <laughs> but his, his, his enthusiasm was he would always inquire deeper into the subject matter. He would ask more questions. And, of course, Krishna, and that's exactly what took place between Maharaj Pariksit and Shukadeva Goswami. Right? When Maharaj Pariksit asked Shukadeva Goswami, what is the duty of a man who's about to die? And uh, Maharaj Pariksit could have asked Shukadeva Goswami, how do I counteract the curse? <laughs> <laughs> but n no, he said, what is the duty of a man who's about to die? And Shukadeva Goswami says that to hear about, to glorify, and to always remember Krishna, the Supreme Personality of Godhead, who is in the super soul, in the heart of all living beings. That is the duty of a man who's is about to die. So Pariksit Maharaj fasted for seven days and nights and just heard Srimad Bhagavatam and became so absorbed. And the speaker, of course, the more the audience is absorbed in hearing. In fact, Krishna, excuse me, Sutta Goswami even glorified the audience. He says, oh, sages, I've been justly questioned for you by you. Your questions are glorious because you're only asking me questions about Krishna. And only questions of this nature can satisfy everybody. Everyone can benefit. Right? He says, I've been justly questioned by you. So he's glorifying that, yes, because you're only interested in hearing. Not only will you benefit, but anybody who hears this discourse, they'll benefit also. And of course, so many thousands of sages also assembled to hear this discourse from the lips of Sutta Goswami to Pariksit Maharaj. More potent. I didn't finish reading the purport. I want to finish reading Srila Prabhupada's purport and then so that we can properly conclude this verse. Uh, now this verse has specific significance. The words idam jnanam, this knowledge, refer to pure devotional service which consists of nine different activities, hearing, chanting, remembering, serving, worshipping, praying, obeying, maintaining friendship, and surrendering everything. By the practice of these nine elements of devotional service, one is elevated to spiritual consciousness, Krishna consciousness. When one's heart is thus cleared of material contamination, one can understand this science of Krishna. Simply to understand that the living entity is not material is not sufficient. That may be the beginning of spiritual realization. But one should recognize the difference between activities of the body and the spiritual activities of one who understands that he is not the body. Again, more, most important, simply to know I am not this body is not sufficient. One should know, okay, if I'm not this body, then who am I? And not only who am I, but what am I going to do after I don't have this body? No. Am I just going to be in bliss? <laughs> Sounds good. Just be in bliss. <laughs> but devotional service, as described by Rupa Goswami, is, f is like so far superior than the bliss of liberation. The liberation is like a drop of water compared to the ocean of bliss in service to Krishna. Because Krishna gives a pleasure. He's a rasa mitamurti. He is the reservoir of all rasa. He is the reservoir of all pleasure. That's Kevala Bhakti. And understanding how Krishna is the reservoir of all rasa and also the reservoir of all pleasure. And when he decides by his sweet will to distribute that pleasure, then that pleasure far surpasses the bliss of Brahman. So Prabhupada is saying here, that may be the beginning of spiritual realization, but one should recognize the difference between activities of the body 
and the spiritual activities of one who understands that he is not the body. In the seventh chapter, we have already discussed the opulent potency of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, his different energies, the inferior and superior natures, and all this material manifestation. Now in chapter 9, the glories of the Lord will be delineated. The word anasuyave in this verse is also very significant. Generally, the commentators, even if they are highly scholarly, are all envious of Krishna, the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Even the most erudite scholars write on Bhagavad Gita very inaccurately because they are envious of Krishna, their commentaries are useless, the commentaries given by devotees of the Lord are bona fide. No one can explain Bhagavad Gita or give perfect knowledge of Krishna if he is envious. One who criticizes the character of Krishna without knowing him is a fool, so such commentaries should be very carefully avoided. For one who understands that Krishna is the Supreme Personality of Godhead, the pure and transcendental personality, these chapters will be very beneficial. There's one minute left. Thank you very much for your attention. I'm sorry there's no time for questions, but we have to have Arctic. Thank you. Hare Krishna.